Welcome to uh, Philly Net Squared, Net Tuesday. Um, as has been a typical kind of thing, I, I like to ask how many people are new here, how many people have been here never before? More than usual. Okay, great. Well, that's the, it'll be a fun experience, and uh, we always have an unusual, not unusual, we always have a um, different mix of people who are here. Sometimes it's unusual. Um, and we'll see how that works out um, as we progress forward. So um, I'm going to make a couple introductory remarks. We'll do a um, chance for people to go around and introduce themselves. You may want to think about, as you introduce yourself, um, you'll, you'll, you can say what your name is, if, if you want to say where you're from, and optionally also, if there's something in particular you'd like to get out of the evening while you came here, you can mention that as well. Philly Net Squared is one of dozens of Net Squared organizations around the world. They're all affiliated with TechSoup Global, the um, national or international nonprofit technology support service based out of San Francisco. And they have slightly different um, uh, missions. We're, we're all uh, kind of, we're independent and we uh, see our, our roles a little bit differently. In our case, we tend to um, circle around the uh, phrase of using the social web for social change. Uh, both of those phrases, social web and social change, are broadly defined. We tend to service um, or, or provide services that are of interest to nonprofit folks and activists and others who are interested in using some sort of the new uh, social technology for social networking and social media that is always becoming more available. The main way in which we accomplish this is through our Net Tuesday uh, meetings, which are the first Tuesday of every month. We've been doing this <coughs> since 2008. Uh, we have a variety of different topics and stuff I'll show you in a moment. We have a website uh, that's right there and a Google group as well. Um, you're, you have the option if you want to be um, added to the Google group, you can do so on the sign-in sheet there. And that gets used for people to ask questions to other folks, make announcements, try out ideas and stuff like that. So if we look at over the past year, the highlighted um, uh, yellow things are the uh, months in which we did our crowdsourcing change event. So we've been doing it every few months. We're starting to do it every quarter now because it's a popular sort of format. And so those are happening every three months. And the other two months of each cycle, we have some sort of topic of interest uh, that, that seems to be relevant to the general theme. And you can see what they are right there. Uh, so looking forward, we'll be doing our next crowdsourcing change event on November 5th. And um, anyone who's interested in working on uh, discussions for planning, we have a very informal conference call happening a week from tonight. So if you're interested in that, please, uh, you can see myself, and I'll give you the access instructions. And we're still working on the themes for September and October. A couple of things we're thinking about and uh, want to uh, solicit ideas or volunteers or uh, uh, suggestions for volunteers. Uh, talking about topics including social images. We've had a social, if you see, we've been doing things, social audio, social presentations, social images as, as another thing in that theme. Online fundraising, uh, wikis in general, and security, which obviously is a hot thing right now. In addition to being in this room, we are also streaming this out through the internet, I think. Is that correct, uh, Brianna? Yeah. OK, great. Hello. And that's with this camera here. This camera is broken. Uh, so uh, unfortunately, we're only going to be using one camera tonight. And uh, we are supporting a Twitter back channel, which Andrew back there is um, monitoring and tweeting on behalf of uh, Philly Net Squared. So if you have a mobile device right now, you can join that uh, back channel if you like. And the folks who are, um, if there's anyone listening on the back channel, which may be nobody, but if you are there and uh, prefer not to completely lurk, you could introduce yourself so at least Andrew can know who's out there. So in addition to the events itself, we're really um, about networking and want to encourage people to connect with one another for whatever their purposes might be. Toward that end, uh, we have a sign-up sheet. Um, you're encouraged to sign in and to make it legible. What I'll do with that information is take the information and send it back out, the contact information back out to the people in this room and only the people in this room. So it's a way of connecting, uh, of collecting the, that information, as is if you leave a business card. We'll scan that. Uh, we'll scan the image of it and send that back out in the follow-up email as well. 
So it's a way of kind of giving your business card to everyone. There are blank business cards. If you didn't bring one or if you have a new identity tonight, uh, feel free to use that. Uh, most people are wearing tag tags, which is a way of introducing yourself with a name as well as um, some sort of conversation starter or something else, uh, in this case, about your heritage that we can use to find out about one another and as an icebreaker for um, questioning, uh, for introducing yourself to others. And we have a strict no questions too stupid policy. Um, we have yet to uh, uh, violate that policy, so try, try to push the limits. Um, a little bit of housekeeping, there's food over there. Uh, we don't want to leave any of it, so please eat it all. Um, you are in a, um, a platinum LEED certified building right now, so um, most everything is compostable. All the food, including the meats and cheeses, all the plates and the cups are all compostable and should go into the compost bin over there. Uh, the plastic wrappings, obviously, are not, and other things that you might bring in, uh, you can use the appropriate receptacle for. Uh, the bathrooms are outside, right past the elevators on the right. Uh, we do have Wi-Fi access. If you're looking for that, it's under the Friends Guest Network. As I mentioned, we are video recording this. We usually have a video-free area, but actually, uh, you're all in the video-free area because we have a broken camera, so you don't have to worry about that. But I want to let you know, we will be using microphones and we encourage you to tolerate that um, when you're asking questions and stuff like that to wait for a microphone. Not so much so that you can be heard within the room, because it's a fairly small room, but so that the stream and the recording from that stream um, can be more audible. Uh, we find that the microphones are very helpful. If you parked across 15th Street, you can get your parking ticket validated at the front desk here to get a di discount. And everyone's invited to come out afterwards for a drink and a bite um, if they would like to continue the conversation in a more informal manner. Uh, our sponsor is the American Friends Service Committee, an international peace and justice organization that is um, headquartered in this building, along with uh, about a couple dozen other um, smaller organizations. And um, that's really um, about it. So what I'm going to do is pass around the microphone and uh, allow people the opportunity to um, introduce themselves and if they want to say something about what they want to get out of the evening, they can. My name is um, Seth Horwitz. I wasn't looking to find out. I just want to make sure. Um, I work here at the American Friends Service Committee, um, working on information architecture and knowledge management. And um, I want to get nothing um, that I can predict out of this evening, except that um, it, it, it always provides some sort of interesting sort of um, insights that, that um, we haven't really, uh, uh, that I've never had before. So um, we'll start over here. Thanks. Hi, everybody. I'm Andy Sharp. I'm a freelance writer with the nonprofit news website Generosity, generosity.org. And um, I'm here tonight just to learn some more about the various organizations. Um, I did get to write about the Support Center for Child Advocates, um, but definitely um, there's still some stuff I can learn about them and certainly about the other organizations. Hi, my name's Devin. I'm from Westchester, and uh, I'm hoping to get out of tonight. I've done a lot of work with corporate strategy and site management, and I'd like to really learn how to use social media for positive social change. So this seemed like a really great way to do it. Um, hi, my name is Dan Garosa, and I'm the Development and Communications Officer at Philadelphia Landmarks. Hi, my name is Lamar Kendrick, and I'm a regular attendee, and I come regularly to learn how organizations are harnessing technology to do what they do. Hi, I'm Lauren Saul. I'm the Director of Public Relations at the National Constitution Center, and we are one of the presenters tonight. Hi, I'm Sarah Fergus. I'm the Public Relations Manager at the National Constitution Center, and as Lauren mentioned, we are very excited to be presenting tonight. Hi, my name is Avi Satlow. Um, I run a nonprofit um, called Avi Cares in the um, in Mainline Ardmore, um, that area. Um, we're still um, under reno uh, under renovation due to getting our, our bylaws uh, situated. Um, if anyone wants to hear more about Avi Cares, you can come talk to me 
or you can um, go on to www.avicares.org, to www.avicares.org to learn more about what we, what we do. Um, okay. My name is Sandra Khalil. I am a um, founder of a nonprofit organization called Crosslink Medical Resources. It's a patient advocacy organization I founded about two and a half years ago. Um, the idea is to be able to connect individuals with resources in a way that's centralized and personalized, regardless of the income of the person or financial situation. Um, I've been working with a big group of people out in Montgomery County that are immigrants and have gone through a lot of um, struggles fi financially, and most of which are uninsurable. Um, so we are about to do a big project in hepatitis C, of which this immigrant group is um, has the highest prevalence in the world. So, and we're about to do this a joint venture with a hospital in Philadelphia um, to get started on this project, and we're about a few weeks away from that joint venture. Um, so, right now, uh, the biggest need is um, someone to help with patient advocacy uh, work, and the biggest is also social media because we need to fundraise. And it's been a challenge getting seed funding. I think this joint venture is a big step um, in terms of access to care, especially with the Obamacare and the Affordable Care Act around the corner. But I'm definitely looking for people that might be interested in helping us fundraise, um, helping us do, you know, lead the crowdfunding efforts for our organization. So I'm soliciting help from anyone that may want to take this task. Um, really lead the fundraising, fundraising efforts for our organization. So um, our website is crosslinkmed.org, C-R-O-S-S-L-I-N-K-M-E-D.org. Um, you can see the most recent press releases and um, get more information. Thank you. Uh, hi, I'm Dave. I'm with the uh, Presbyterian Historical Society. I'm part of the Communications Task Force. Uh, while we're not necessarily uh, involved with social change, we are a nonprofit trying to understand uh, the use of social media and uh, how we can use it to communicate what we do uh, and build more support for our organization. And uh, I was talking to Seth before I came here, and one of the things we're struggling with is there's so many different social media platforms, and every organization is different, but we're uh, kind of wrestling with which social media platform is most appropriate for us? Do we use Twitter, not use Twitter? Do we use, uh, we already use Facebook, and uh, so for what we uh, specifically do, which one of the many social platforms that are coming up is the uh, best one for us? Thanks. Hi, I'm Todd Von Dijk. Uh, after about 16 years working in nonprofits and associations, I just opened my own firm doing membership and marketing development. And one of the nice parts is my work usually took me outside of Philadelphia, so I saw this as perhaps an opportunity to contribute a little to what's going on inside of Philadelphia. Uh, happy to be here. Hi, I'm Tracy from Child Advocates. We're presenting tonight. Um, I'm the communications associate. I'm Maura Mulroney. I'm director of development and communications. We're presenting and really can't wait to get feedback from all of you. I'm Kate Gabbley. I'm a development officer at the Support Center for Child Advocates. Hi, I'm Barry Becker with Primitive World Productions, and we are a full service video production company that specializes in the nonprofit community. Joe Rosado, uh, I have my own information technology company and also a theater group, um, and I'm here just to uh, pull in the information um, and uh, to connect up. Um, and I've been going this for maybe about four to five times. I think this is my fourth meeting. Hi. Oh, excuse me. Um, I'm Natalie Lipsky. Um, I'm with Occupy Sandy, New Jersey. Um, and I'm basically here uh, for the first time. Um, and I'm excited to see how other nonprofits do utilize uh, social media platforms um, to get the messages out. Hi everyone, my name is Andrew Sather. I work for a small, a private, nonprofit uh, law library called Jenkins Law Library at 9th and Chestnut. And I'm here every month. Like Seth said, I'll be monitoring Twitter and I'm excited to hear what our nonprofits have to share with us this month and then what I'll hear uh, for suggestions uh, for them. 
Hi, um, I'm Jim Worcester. I'm co-founder of a new nonprofit called New Avenue Foundation. We're only four months old. Our mission is to create meaningful lives for people with disabilities and autism through creative housing and job opportunities. And uh, it's been a trip so far, and uh, we hope to be moving forward. Uh, another thing that I'm involved with is the uh, Patch Adams Free Clinic in Philadelphia. And I was honored to meet the famous doctor a week or so ago when he came to visit Philadelphia. And uh, it was just a blast. He's a really fun guy. My name is Brianna Morgan. I'm with the Office of HIV Planning, which plans HIV care and prevention services in and around Philly. Um, aside from health planning, I also do all of our web and social media stuff. So I've been coming here for, I guess, a year and a half now and always get something out of it, especially the crowdsourcing chain. Okay, thank you, everyone. I think we caught everyone. Um, there's something I forgot to mention. I just want to mention is that um, one of the things happening back there is that uh, Jim Worcester is, uh, uh, has volunteered to oops, take some notes. And so... Um, after the actual presentation, when we get to the point where people are sharing insights and perspectives and feedback, we'll try and take those notes and display them over, over, you know, at, at times. So you can use that both um, as a way of verifying that you got something or to correct it or to put in a, um, a URL or something like that. And then, of course, we'll distribute these notes to everyone um, afterwards. Uh, and it doesn't ha and, and I just want to emphasize that the, the, uh, the, the, the kind of feedback that, that gets tossed out is not necessarily expertise or um, high on mighty sort of stuff. It's, all, it's often very um, mundane feedback and reactions and perspective of what regular people are seeing when, when they're talking about this stuff. So we'll, um, we'll take all those notes and, and display those as we go forward. And I'm going to turn it over to Denny. Welcome, everyone. I'm Danny Casarell, and I work for a nonprofit health insurer here in Philadelphia called Health Partners. I'm their online and new media specialist. And I'm a web geek, journalist, person just very interested in technology and social media, marketing, communications. And I am the moderator for tonight. So just to start, I know Seth had asked how many people had been to a Philly Nets Grid. So I'm wondering how many people have been to a crowdsourcing change event in the past. Okay. Our usual suspects. Good. <laughs> well, thanks for coming back. We're glad to have you here, and we're also happy to have all of our newcomers. It's one of our, as Seth had mentioned, one of our most popular programs. It's always lively. And um, I find that even though... We sort of promote it as saying it's a way for organizations to come here and for them to explain what they're doing and for the crowd to offer feedback in terms of, you know, how they can improve their social media. It's also been very, very insightful and helpful to us to just learn about all kinds of organizations all throughout the city and to hear how other organizations are using social media because it's not as if the organizations are here or just they don't know what they're doing. It's like they're doing a lot of things right to begin with, and so it's very helpful to us just to hear how different organizations approach social media. So um, just in case, for those of you who have not been here before, I'll just explain very briefly how it works. So we have two presenters tonight. Each presenter, they present individually. They will come up here. They'll explain what the organization does, a little bit about their marketing, talk about their social media. And then it's time for our crowd, which is you, to offer suggestions and feedback about uh, how they can improve their use of social media. And as Seth had mentioned, you, know, you don't have to be a social media expert. Uh, for instance, we have the National Constitution Center here. Perhaps you've been there or you might want to go there, and so you are a potential patron. So you could talk about you know, that from that perspective. But in any case, everyone you know, is welcome to offer their feedback and suggestions for how the different organizations can better leverage their social media. And they'll also, throughout their presentations, perhaps also mention sort of whatever what their challenges are. Maybe they've got a new project coming up, so it's something maybe specific that they'll be, you know, wanting um, very uh, targeted types of feedback on. And so that's how it works. And um, also I should mention that as some people did see that we did have one presenter who did have to unfortunately cancel at the last minute due to a scheduling conflict, which was the Agatston Urban Nutrition Initiative, and they will be rescheduled at another time. So they are, they will be back, they will be uh, here at a later date. And uh, with that, I will get started 
with our first presenter, which is the Support Center for Child Advocates, uh, which provides legal assistance and social service advocacy for Philadelphia's abused and neglected children. Child Advocates maintains a unique role in the Philadelphia legal system by working to change the circumstances of child victims of abuse and neglect with uh, legal and social services provided by volunteer attorneys and experienced child advocate social workers. Since its founding in 1977, Child Advocates has trained more than 6,000 attorneys who contribute pro bono services valued at more than 4.6 million annually. So they do a lot of good and they get a lot of people involved with their organization. Last year, Child Advocates serve more than 800 children. I hope I'm not taking your whole presentation away. Here. <laughs> <laughs> this is part of mine. Okay, so Tracy, good. Okay. Got the rest. Um, Take it from here. Okay. So uh, just in advance, we did it, it just sort of ask uh, some things that Child Advocates might like to get from our crowd. And so um, they would like us to help, up, help, help them to come up with ways uh, to stimulate community participation in online conversation. And they're also interested in, in improving fundraising efforts. And I'm sure they'll explain more thoroughly what they mean by that. And um, the presenters are, and I'm, I know when I see your name, I always want to pronounce it, but you said it different. So I'll let you say your name. Maura. Maura Mulroney. Yeah. Okay. And she's the Director of Development and Communications. And Tracy Buckholtz, <laughs> it's a communication, that one I got, communications associate. So take it away. Um, well, she did take, uh, uh, did it very nicely. It was sort of the introduction of who we are. But essentially, we are the free lawyer program for kids who are in the uh, child welfare system. So um, we're appointed by the courts uh, as an agency to represent children who've been abused and neglected. They've been identified by DHS, um, and we represent them in court. Uh, most of the issues that we're um, dealing with legally are uh, placement and getting them um, into their, uh, getting them into a uh, safe and permanent home. Um, and it's different for, for every case and every child. But we are, um, um, so we represent over 800 kids a year. In order to do that, our model is to, uh, assign a, um, to, we recruit, train, and support volunteer lawyers. So we go out, that's one thing that we'd like to talk about tonight is, you know, through social media, recruiting volunteers. So our volunteers are mostly specific to, uh, to uh, attorneys locally. Uh, we assign a volunteer attorney and a staff social worker to represent each child or sibling group. So it's a lot of volunteers in a year. It's well over 300 volunteers every year, and as she mentioned, the contributed services of those volunteers are um, close to $5 million a year. We have wonderful volunteers. Um, we, uh, um, here's our mission statement, kind of tells who we are, um, you know, working with these kids, not just in, the, um, in their legal uh, proceedings, but also we're in their life. So we, with the social workers, we, uh, we take the attorneys on home visits, we get into their homes, into their schools, we learn these children, we learn their circumstances, and ultimately we are advising the court on where these children should be placed, either reunified with their family um, or uh, uh, clearing the way to an adoption. Um, over 90% of our children, we don't, our, their cases are closed with a permanent, legal, permanent, safe environment. Um, cases can stay open for two to four years, typically. Uh, some much longer, large sibling groups will often have the cases open for 10 years. Um, so we are, we get the most complex cases. We deal with medically needy children, large sibling groups, um, LGBT youth. Uh, we have sort of a specialty in a lot of different areas and we hire staff um, to, who are specialists in that area and we bring the volunteer attorneys along in that in that field. So we um, are old. We're, we're secure. We're well uh, funded. Um, we are about a 2.5 million dollar organization. Two million a year is raised charitably. Um, we spend everything. We go back to zero every year. Um, uh, so. For us, um, marketing and communication is very important in order to engage our volunteers and to raise money. 
Um, we have a, a, a well-established brand uh, back in 2006, working with Lev Lane. Um, Bruce Lev was on our board for uh, six years. Um, Lev Lane has been very generous to us with their uh, time, um, their creativity. And so they branded us in 2006, creating this logo. Um, it's, you know, the ball sort of represents bringing balance into the lives of our children. Um, we refreshed the brand um, just last year and this year by uh, bringing in sort of new images. We have a billboard. Hopefully any of you guys coming back from the airport have noticed our new billboard. Uh, up top there, it's, um, if you're coming from the city, from the airport into the city, you pass right by it. And it's, uh, it's, it's I think it's very powerful. We have donated space from uh, Steen Advertising. We give them a couple of foursomes that are golf outing. And, they give us billboard space, so that's pretty great. Um, we did Center City District banners um, to the far right, uh, that, that girl with abused, neglected, forgotten. Um, and this girl on the ball was sort of how we refreshed the logo and brought it to life. Um, these images are, were, you know, we're pretty, we keep pretty tight to, to um, what our, our brand is so that we're recognizable. Um, we unfortunately can't use real children. We don't take pictures of our kids. We don't tell who our clients are. Uh, we are attorneys. There's client kind of confidentiality issues. Um, so it is an obstacle in finding ways to engage our um, community with our work. Uh, our, because our volunteers have to have specific, specific skills. Their volunteers um, you know, are, are legal volunteers. We don't have a lot of room for lay people uh, in our work. Um, so, in order to get people beyond the legal community to understand what we do um, is, is a challenge. So we do tell the story. Um, we use, um, we, use um, we use the stories, we change the names, we change some identifying um, information, uh, but you know, you can't really, you can't bring a, a donor to meet a client. Uh, those sorts of things. So that's that's one of our challenges, just as the communication and marketing um, as a whole. So um, these are kind of our goals on presence, um, you know, along with our, our larger marketing. Um, we're always trying to engage our audiences, uh, whether it's donors, whether it's volunteers, um, the broader community, who, you know, people who care about children. Um, promote our events, recruit volunteers, acknowledge and thank donors. Um, obviously, try to raise money online as well as face-to-face uh, -face and through direct mail. Um, and educate and inform about child abuse, uh, child welfare issues. And then, obviously, to inspire. We feel like we're a, a social justice organization doing doing good work for, uh, for children who you know, have the right to an attorney. And so that's why we're there. Um, we, like I said, we did launch uh, a refreshed website just in the past year. Got to say, uh, Tracy Buckholz. We could not have done it without her. She made this project happen. Um, Love Lane was uh, created the images, but one of the cool things is that we have our social media streaming right on the on the home page, um, so it'll sort of continue through the you know, about how far back it goes, but you'll see all of them will come up, Twitter and our Pinterest and our Facebook. So we have um, tried to incorporate social media and most of the things that we do. And um, we have, uh, we do some things pretty well, uh, but I think there's some area where we could really have, uh, get some help from you guys and others uh, about how things work for you. Um, we have, you know, we sort of started in Facebook. Um, we feel like we've got sort of a, a nice following there. Obviously, everybody wants a bigger and, and larger following. But we, um, I think, you know, as, as we're growing in our expertise in this area, we're growing in our uh, presence online. And this is kind of where Tracy steps in and can tell you the details about um, our strategy towards each of our online um, platforms, um, what we do well, and kind of where we want to, to see some improvement. So I'm going to turn it over to Tracy to talk some specifics. Okay. 
Um, so we're going to start with Facebook. As you can see, um, based on last year, we're up 21% in, in terms of likes and how many people are actually getting to our page, which is great. Um, right now on Facebook, I feel like that's where we have the most uh, variety of, of topics happening and, and different things that we're doing. Right now we're posting everything from current news stories to parenting tips to uh, inspirational children's quotes to we're even taking now um, different awareness months because we found that we'll get to what's most popular and what we've seen, but um, taking things like uh, Children's Mental Health uh, Awareness Day and posting you know different topics on that. Uh, we also post event pictures. We're doing um, promo videos and then uh, our constant contact email newsletter that goes out um, all ends up on Facebook. So that's a big chunk of sort of where we spend our time. The beauty of uh, Facebook and, and having some interns is that right now we have content scheduled out through January, um, which is great. So it kind of gives us time to then focus on you know, the more current news stories and pop them in as, as we're going, promote the events as they're coming up, um, and stay relevant with, with the other stuff that's less um, time sensitive. Uh, so just to take a look when we're looking through at some of our statistics, um, the most popular posts that we have right now on our site are uh, quotes regarding children and, and inspirational quotes, which was something we started a few months ago. Um, based on the popularity of that, we've started doing photo quotes not necessarily uh, directly related to, to, to what we do, but, it, but it's reaching the audience who I think um, are probably a lot of parents, a lot of um, people interested that are on Facebook, maybe like an everyday, it's an everyday user um, that's just looking for content. Um, very we feel that, yeah, sorry, um, that we, you know, our audience on Facebook, what we hope is people who care about children. So um, they like us because we help kids, um, and you know the, those that are, are sort of looking for organizations that are doing good work for children are going to connect with us. So we're trying to provide them. You know, these are people who are good parents and are good to children. So we're providing them with parent tips and you know put sunscreen on your kids and things that have nothing to do with our work, but have to do with our audience. And um, we're finding it it's working a little bit, and that's been new the last couple. Of um, so again, from this from this graphic, you can see that the the photo quotes are or the photos in general are our top uh, way to engage with the audience. Um, a lot of event photos from um, you know the events that we throw, uh, we'll put them up there, and people do go in and tag themselves. We like that so you get the people who are at the event coming back and checking in. But we found that it, it's for you know it's it's broader than that. It's people who weren't at the event who are checking it out. So the hope is that maybe they'll like what they see and come to another event. Um, and you know that's I think that's a positive. Um, based on uh, the popularity of the photos, events, and inspirational, what we decided to do then is start making promotional videos um, that would you know help promote upcoming events, highlight events from the past, use. Um, photography and videography in the video. So we actually have one that we're going to show you that is for our upcoming golf event <coughs> on September 30th, just to give you an idea. Um, and these have been super popular. So we're, this is something we're going to try to continue with, assuming we can find um, interns to create them. <laughs> So for us, we think that as much as people like to see themselves in, in uh, photos, they love to share a video with them, right? So um, we're going to go forward with that. 
So this graphic basically shows that our audience is online every day, which I think gives us an opportunity to reach them on the weekends when other companies or other people soliciting donations um, may not actually be active. So we are starting to schedule out content um, on Saturdays and Sundays. Just because we, you know, based on this, there's just as many users during the week um, and the weekend. So that's one thing we've started to change. So LinkedIn for us um, is much different than Facebook. And kind of without jumping to the next um, graphic too quickly, we do have a group page and we have a company page. Um, the company page is new this year. We have 192 followers. Um, So the biggest struggle for us with LinkedIn is posting the right material for the audience. Um, what you can see from these graphics is that this audience is very much specifically uh, in the law field, law practice. Um, so we want to make sure that we're not sort of wasting their time posting content that they, you know, isn't relevant to what they're doing on a day-to-day -day basis. That being said, um, we are currently using LinkedIn to post job openings. We'll post um, op-eds from our executive director. We'll post our constant contact newsletter, but that's about it. Um, we're trying to stay away from posting anything that's not, I don't want to say business related, but related yeah, we, to you know, we, we take the parenting tips out, you know, we wouldn't share that there. We're looking more for people who are either going to uh, engage us, with us on a professional level, either through as a volunteer, and then we will do some fundraising um, uh, taps there too, because they might want to come out with all. But um, it's it's not as it's not the fun stuff uh, as much, and you know this is an area where I think we have an opportunity for a lot of growth if we get our heads around uh, who's paying attention. I think you know there's um, an opportunity for some substantive content, um, you know, either from our executive director or um, other sort of leaders in the in the work. I think people would find that interesting here, and we haven't gone there yet. And this, I guess, is someone we would be posting about clients and cases if, if that was something we could do. So we're sort of... Or advances in the law in the area of child welfare and that sort of thing. It feels to me like this would be something that um, our, our volunteers could use as a, as a source, as a resource. Um, but it, we haven't quite figured out how to do that. And I think this would involve um, incorporating more staff participation um, to, to get some of that, that material and copy. Uh, so Twitter. Twitter is our biggest, it's a, it's a conundrum right now, trying to figure out what we want to do with it, who our audience is, um, are they even listening? I'm not, you know, from what I see on our Twitter page on a, on a daily basis, most of our followers are law firms. Um, and I'm not sure if that's interns that are just trying to get follows. I don't see a lot of participation. Um, our page is not very active. That said, you know, what we have on there right now is, is similar to Facebook. We have the inspirational quotes, we have the parenting tips, um, we'll have links to our newsletter. Um, again, this is a place where we can schedule out content and then try to stay uh, current with, with news, news pieces if they come up and we want to post them on there. Our goal, um, which we are trying to wrap our head around right now, is getting our executive director on board to do uh, tweeting. Um, and that has been so far a struggle, but we're working on, I think in a perfect world, we would have him tweeting from different uh, conferences he's going to, different meetings he's in, as well as um, commentary on, on cases in the city. Uh, we're seeing hesitant to talk about other people's cases, but I think we can and we should. Um, people look at us for that. Um, so, yeah, so, so, you know, we're lawyers. Um, I'm actually a lawyer, I'm not practicing anymore. I just get to play with them again. Um, but you, you, get a, you get a building full of lawyers and you have a lot of, like, whoa, we can't, you know, it's got to go through checks and approvals. And that's not Twitter, you know, I mean, it's not real time. It's not, um, you know, kind of live action. So that's why we, you know, it's, it's our goal to try to get people there, to get the executive director or the managing attorney a lot more comfortable about what the boundaries are. But in the legal field, these are issues. These are issues that lawyers are dealing with, is how, how can they use social media without crossing um, some ethical boundaries and that sort of thing. So we're kind of in the middle of that. Um, but as Tracy said, the goal is to get there, to figure out what the boundaries are, what our rules are about it, and then a little bit of freedom to, uh, to use it. Um, 
the way I think it was built to be. And I think this is an area where we definitely would welcome um, a lot of feedback tonight. I think that's that's one of the biggest gray areas right now is Twitter. Um, so Pinterest, uh, we couldn't do Instagram because of the, the problems using a mobile phone to take pictures. We can't take pictures of our clients. So we thought the next best thing would be to get up on uh, Pinterest. So right now we've got 12 different boards versus three last year. Um, we've got, if this is an interim live project, we've noticed higher traffic on the weekends. Our audience is 95% female. Um, you know, our, our top, so these are the different boards we have. Our top boards right now are best parenting practices, crafts for kids, and of course, once again, the uh, inspirational quotes, which people can't get enough of. Um, so this is sort of running itself. I'm not sure in terms of measuring success on this um, that we necessarily need to, as long as we're putting up new content and sort of people are engaged in the beginning and we're seeing that. Um, so it's working. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if there's a campaign to do on here, um, but I think we're getting enough enough repins and, and enough traffic that it, that it makes it, makes it worth the while of interns to do this when there's free time. And that's sort of how we look at it. It's a little side project, uh, but where we're spending the least amount of time. On this so this was uh, just sort of our attempt to uh, put out some things that we've talked about through the um, through the presentation. Um, it's you know it always comes back to who is our audience, how to get our audience um, engaged, and um, sort of give them what they're looking for. I mean, as as you know, all of us in communications and marketing and social media, you know, we spend a lot of time giving them what we want them to have. Um, you know, we're obviously trying to think more about what they're looking for. Um, you know, I would love to only do fundraising things and have everybody give me money, but, um, you know, that's not what they're looking for. Hopefully we can engage them differently so that they want to give us money and, and want to see them um, successful. So, um, you know, this is sort of just to kind of generate some, some discussion from you guys. And then um, I think the other uh, piece is the fundraising through social media I think is sort of our that crowdfunding um, question is um, we haven't attempted it yet we've just completed a strategic plan looking out the next seven years it's in there um, you know all these board members who are not very social media savvy sat down and decided that we're gonna do crowdfunding and that's gonna be in the you know, so it's something that we're uh, we're tasked to do I think it's something that um, there's a lot of potential there we do um, raise money online through uh, e-blasts, and we use our social media platforms to do that, but it's always a side-by-side -side with another effort, a direct mail piece. It's a companion piece to our existing fundraising um, methodology. So, you know, I would love to, to learn how others are using social media for, you know, a, a certain campaign, a particular project, um, you know, setting goals for that. Um, what are the benefits that you're offering um, for, for folks to, to join into those uh, campaigns? And then how to you know, weave that into the, to the other fundraising and communications work that we're doing. So those are sort of our questions out, and we're glad to be here. And we'll take anything we can get from you. Great. Well, thank you. That was a very thorough presentation, and you're, I mean, you're doing a lot. We're doing I a lot. I mean, you're really doing a lot. And... Um, I mean, you're already ahead of the game with a lot of organizations because you're looking at your analytics, which you'd be surprised. You know, you think well, you're laughing, but like, you know, that you're really looking at them and not just not just looking, but analyzing and you know, trying to leverage and see, you know, what's working as you're saying what's not. So that's great. So you're so far. I mean, you're doing a lot of things. So all right, let's um, we'll open the floor. And um, Eddie, before we begin, we're a little bit short volunteered today. I'm wondering if we could have a couple people who might volunteer to run the mics. Denny will identify who can speak next, but we can use someone who can run a mic around um, back and forth. Okay. One. Do we have a second one? There we go. One, two. Okay. Why don't we take this? Stand up. Okay. So does anyone just have anything they just want to start off with in terms of their overall impressions or something that struck them about what they were talking about in terms of use of social media? Avi? 
Grace, you on the mic or now? Here. Okay, I'll just show in the chart. So, um, um, I, I wrote down the feedback on a sheet of paper. I was getting the presentation. But overall, I feel that you're, you're doing a, real, a good job, and I feel like from what you did, it's better than a lot of things I've seen. Just so you know that I haven't used social media that very much for my own nonprofit, but I've done a lot of classes. Um, I've done classes on it, so I taught. I have all this, the, the stuff that people taught, but I don't know. I don't have experience. The only people who really have experience is LinkedIn. So just letting you know that when I start going to give feedback, that the only place I've given, I've really used a lot is LinkedIn. So, uh, and that's for myself, not for the nonprofit. But um, so my my feedback I see is that um, is that uh, you want uh, that likes are a good thing to have. Um, not, um, but they're not, the, well not, sometimes having fewer likes can be better, but they're, if they're good likes. It may be better to have likes that are, um, is it different to have just, uh, likes, click like and never see you again? Or versus likes that he will really, really, really are dedicated to what you're doing. Um, um, and again, I have, I've only really heard that through classes and not through my personal experience, but, um, the second thing, I'm not sure if you know what edge rank is. You know what that is or no? What's that? Ed, you know what edge rank is or no? I don't. No. So it, uh, it's very important to you. It's very important to know if you're using Facebook. It basically, the way, it, basically what it is is it um, weighs different um, comments on your on your um, the, the board at the beginning. People's news feeds. So, and unfortunately for us as, as nonprofits or what or corporations. Do you have less weight on your, on news feed on your on your edge on your on edge rank than if you're an individual posting? Um, but there there are four different uh, things that get weighed. I don't remember. I think they would like how many people are how many people are. I don't remember exactly, but you have to you can go online look up edge rank on Facebook and they'll tell and there's there's plenty of articles that'll share with you what edge rank is. But I don't know and I, I don't want to see the wrong information. Um, my second piece, I'm sorry I have a lot of feedback, so I don't want to take up everyone's time, but I have, I, that's why I was, but I'm saying that. So, um, the second thing is, uh, the sec third thing I say is that um, I, I want to say it's a great idea that you're writing things other than what you actually are working for. Keep on social media, don't want to hear about, want to be advertising, don't want to be solicited like a, like a TV commercial. So, so the best thing to do, in my opinion, again, I'm not, I don't have any experience with it, but I just kind of have a, something like my head, is to not try to advertise directly like, I want you to use the service, but to uh, write, but to just try to have a conversation like you're a human being, like you're talking with your friends at, um, a meal. It's, it's, that's what it's, that's what social media is. Not not there to advertise. It's there to make conversation and socialize people with your your followers. Um, photos. I like the idea a lot about. I mean, generally, um, from, my, from my experience, from two different instructors that I had on Facebook, they said that photos and videos are the most or far more helpful than in, in, in stuff you can, anything you can write. And I would say the videos are. So important to your um, to, to Facebook or something like that. I mean, I really, really, really liked the uh, video we had. It seemed like it really, really worked well. If you put that on Facebook, it, 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 people could like send it to their friends and get your word out. But but all I feel is that it may be so good that it, if you can't find an intern to do it, you may want you might want to pay a professional doing it because I mean, if you I mean uh, you, you, you indirectly it get you money. And that, I mean, it might pay for yourself. I, I, I'm not, a, I, again, I'm not ex fully experienced. That's my gut saying it. Um, and going on to LinkedIn, um, uh, I know that I, I uh, participate a lot in group discussions. You know how LinkedIn has group um, discussions? Um, so I would suggest those, I mean, I, I post on those groups, so that's how I know. But I know that, um, yeah, yeah, various people. I don't. I don't. I've never posted a, a, a link to my group, to a group. But um, uh, you can assume you assume you're, if you're a group member, you can. But I'm not sure. And you have these groups. You have a huge list of stuff. Some, um, some groups are shorter. Some are longer. You take a click, and the, the groups are. And, and then you can uh, have a discussion with um, 
group me- uh, other members of the group discussing that particular topic. LinkedIn, unlike Facebook, is very professional. You don't use slang or uh, or informal language on LinkedIn. LinkedIn is professional, like you're, like you're writing a, a business email. Facebook is informal. You you talk like you're like you're socializing with your friends. That's um, but um, that's I answer your question about what to discuss. Everything that's informal, you don't discuss on LinkedIn. Anything that's as formal, yes, you put on LinkedIn. But that's generally um, for my advice. And, and the advice I would have is that. You know, you have your own LinkedIn group. You want to be joining other groups that um, that are um, difficult to. Um, you want to be joining other groups, um, not just the ones that you have, because by joining, I mean not not the organization. You can't do that. It's you personally uh, on LinkedIn, um, and you can um, um, by doing that. You, um, you can, I assume you can post stuff, I'm probably be wrong, but um, you can uh, start talking to other people and, and I know that uh, I was starting, I, I was looking at group lists for a while. I know that I've been starting to, I've been starting to talk on other people's groups. I think I did that for a couple, two, three weeks now. And um, um, due to that, two people are now my, are now my, my, my connections due to, uh, chatting with people for maybe half an hour, an hour a day, on LinkedIn two, for for two to three weeks. I got two, I got two or three connections that we never would have had otherwise. Uh, um, and then my feeling that LinkedIn is network, LinkedIn is a networking thing like you're doing here. It's not there to, um, it's not really there. It's, that's what its purpose is. Is 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 more over talk, giving people like their customers. Prime, I would say that's, I would say the main, the more it's more important, more purpose is is to get other lawyers and other people in your field more interested in like being more um, like connecting with other lawyers. You don't have to come to groups like this. You can just do it on, on your computer, and, and, and that's what that's generally I see the main purpose of LinkedIn is to do that. Um, and that's what I'm trying. That's what I use it for. I don't mean to, people say it's a it's a, jo- it's a job hunting thing. It's not really that. A job hunting thing, you click, click, and you get, and you get your job. That's how LinkedIn works. LinkedIn works, you connect to people, and then your connection gives you jobs. That's what the misconception is. So my idea, like I said, is for LinkedIn is to join groups and um, uh, start posting discussions. On th- and you can watch the discussion on things that would really help. Uh, and, and then the final uh, piece of advice I have, I apologize for anyone who uh, wants to discuss things and, and didn't get a chance, but... Uh, um, is that you don't want? It, 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 I would say less is more in terms of social media. I know you're on four different social media sites, but it's um, it's it may be best to take to stop to not to discontinue um, some of them so you can get, get bang more and, and more better instead of more. There's uh, two, there's two so, uh, many social media teachers I had said do not discuss. Do you not have so much? Do you not go overboard with also uh, going on everything? And, and also, if anyone says this, never, ever, ever post the same exact content on different social media sites. There's LinkedIn and Facebook and Twitter. I don't know about Pinterest. I don't know that at all. But, but I know those three have different forms of communication and different ways you communicate things. So never, ever have one way of writing all three for all three. And that's all my uh, feedback. Thank you for your time listening. Okay. Thanks, Sally. That, that was quite a lot. Great. Excellent. And just to, I, yeah. just to point yeah. out to, yeah. to the last point you made about um, posting everything yeah. um, on the same same social media sites, mm-hmm. we do change um, the calendar timing of, of the different uh, pieces that go up. So if it does show up on Twitter, it's not showing up the same day as Facebook. Um, but yeah, all of us went through that. The, the point that I was saying was that that's not what I'm talking about. But I'm saying, one of the point I'm sharing is that they all have all three of them have different language, and it's it's, it's a shortcut to use all to, to talk all three of them in the same language, but it doesn't get you as far. It's, it's, it's easier, but it's not bad. It's not, it, makes, it makes you it makes it very impersonal, and people and people are not like it. In fact, that's that's what the teachers told me, but I don't know. I never had that. I never had personal experience. Yeah. Okay. Uh, great. All right. Uh, Hi, I, I think it's great what you're doing. I mean, coming out and saying hell, you know, laying out what you're doing and what what you don't like about what you're doing is a a big thing. Um, three things quick that come to mind. 
Uh, obviously, very impressive growth with likes, follows, tweets, take your pick. But I'm wondering and, and guessing how much you're organized around your metrics. You probably know it. How much is it driving the real metric I'm curious about is what are those likes doing and are they doing the activity that you want them to do? Are they going to a web and giving you their name so that your prospect database goes up? And do you have concrete actions you're looking to have happen and are you tracking those? I think is a piece of interest that you know I'm, I'm sure you're doing to some degree. Um, an experience I've had uh, from, an, from past lives, um, finding three or four, maybe five max, folks who are interested in helping you on your social media and almost having an ongoing online focus group through a platform like me where they have their own chat room and, and you have that real-time feedback about what people are wanting and, and where you can bounce the ideas. I think it's a great complement to the data to have the quantitative and the qualitative. And, and obviously, and anything you're getting is, is gut reaction without, all, you know, much more than that. But there seems to be something underneath in inappropriate ways getting your volunteers to go out and be your voice in terms of being the, you know, getting giving them materials and a toolkit they can do to go tweet, they can take to their social media and tell your story. Um, your donors, you know, the old member get a member, donor get a donor type philosophy. You know, we're in a social space, but I still think the same rules of A-B split tests and things like that still apply, perhaps even more because you can do it faster. And the legal marketing community, maybe, maybe that's a place on top of the lawyers who can be of help. And the board, I think, is another component yeah, to go absolutely. along with the volunteer lawyers is getting the board um, on board with, with doing this kind of stuff, too. So. Okay. Thank I, you. Sure. Seth, did you have a suggestion or were you? Um, I did, but I'm getting batteries. So oh, okay. All right. I'm, I'm sorry. I wanted to. I, I know I, I talk a lot of time. I wanted, I just wanted to clarify. I drank was. I think I, I, I might have. I'm not sure how everyone knows what it is, but um, I just want to say real fast. I'll try to be quick. But um, what I'm, all I'm saying is that what I drank is the reason why it's important is what, 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 why I said it is because. The higher your any weight is weighed on the edge rank based on the various quarter variables that I can't not remember, um, the more likely it is you'll be on news feeds. You'll and that's where people look. It'll look on your pins, look on news pins. So if you, you know follow, follow edge rank, you get more you get more you get more you, you reward on news feed. And if you want to, you can average the pay money for people to for to, to get your thing on on news feeds. But that's a different story. Right. So. Yeah. Um. I know you were mentioning, I think, a little bit on Twitter, but I mean, Twitter is, of course, as you mentioned, it's more real time. Right. And it seems to me, at least, and, you know, everybody uses it differently, but um, that the successful, many successful ones, that you're sort of not only just you're curating content as well as, you know, producing content. And there would be, I would think there would be a lot of uh, other people, organizations that have a kinship to what you're doing and just by and also on Facebook too but you know with Facebook they say it's not really the likes that matter it's the share so I'm not you know whatever you know everybody has to say what they want to say but a share in as from terms of Google gets more weight you know if you're on you know you're not talking about search engines but they, they do sort of do it that way so um, you know as, as well as having all of your content which you're producing really great content and you're right on Twitter the quotes I mean people are constantly retweeting them but, I mean, people will sort of find you sometimes in an indirect way, you know, in that. So if you can look also at what others who are, as I said, sort of in the space or the space that you want to get into um, or are interested in sort of, you know, and you just kind of, I don't want to use the word lurk, but, you know, you kind of yeah, sort of do that. Yeah. Yeah. You do a little of that. And, um, you know, follow some people, but, you know, doing some retweeting or sharing within your own um, feed, you know, other people's, and then people go, oh, you know, someone shared, you know, and then people look and see who shares, yeah. and that. So, um, just kind of, as I said, you know, having, I, you're, you're doing a lot, so there's only so much you can do, right. but, uh, you know, a modicum of, quote, unquote, you know, curating of other things yeah. will probably go, you know, a long way. So, anyway, okay, uh, Lauren has something. Sure. <laughs> Um, I was actually going to follow up with you, Denny. I agreed. I think that the way to kind of up your Twitter followers are to follow a lot of people and to be aggressive with that and just spend, have an intern spend 
half an hour and do like-minded institutions because then you start to, that really is a great easy way to boost people. And then you've got content when you have news stories about you. You can tag the journalists that write them. People love that. Um, acknowledgement in that space um, and that's a great way to be a partner share their content they see that you're willing to do so you get a couple more followers because they retweet to their followers things like that but it's I feel like it's it's where everything is going but what you have you have the basis it's the time that you need to be able to do that so, I mean, we actually you know for who we are and our budget and stuff Tracy is our social media she does a, a sort of little little more than half time I steal her from uh, more than I'm supposed to, but um, so you know, I'm very grateful to have somebody on staff who can do it. Um, but you know, it really is only half time, so we fill in with interns. And, and are you on Twitter yourself? Yeah, not very well. Yeah. Because I think that also can sometimes will help inform because you're doing it, like getting yeah. into that practice and things exactly. like that. It was, that's what I'm trying to do mm -hmm. personally is get better at it so that I can. Yeah. Sort of it was not something I wanted to do. Work. They dragged me kicking and screaming into. Yeah, yeah, dragging my feet a little bit. Yeah, but, uh, but I am. I'm trying. It's all good work. Um, yeah. And there was an article. Was it the legal intelligence? Or, there was an article about um, law firms using different social media um, outlets and not actually really using them. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's you know when you guys are saying to to find people, I think that's the question is. Finding someone that's alive, actually using their Twitter, mm -hmm. that's not trying to sell you something, right. that's an active participant. Yeah. And I think that's right. that's the struggle we've found. I mean, we follow the law firms, we've gone our, our you know our, through our biannual report and had our interns follow every mm -hmm. every company that, um, that donated to, to us. But in terms of finding active users, it, it's possible that it's not our age group of, of who our volunteers or donors are, which, which might be, I think, part of the problem. Um, so now it's sort of finding new, new people to get interested in, in what we do. You said that um, you were trying to stimulate more community participation. Uh, what community are you trying to stimulate? You know, um, I think there's an overall goal, I think, for, for fundraising efforts, which is part of it, but there's also volunteer lawyers that we try to reach out to or that we're always in, in need of. And um, I think those are probably the two biggest is, is donors and... Yeah, I mean, sort of, you know, if, if you're looking at this from, from our point of view about who we need, it's, it, you know, it's always going to be money and time. Um, so, you know, so uh, the trick is to figure out how to engage people in a place that they want to be engaged. So it's lawyers you're trying to engage. Okay. And then earlier you said you were well-funded, but you said you're trying to raise money. So well, I mean, we're... To raise we're money a, for? I mean, we're a nonprofit, like most of everybody here. So the, you know, the bucket's empty on on July first to zero. So every year I've got to raise, you know, two to two and a half million dollars to do the work we do. And we also, you know, we have a pretty good, we've got a pretty strong track record over three decades of of increasing our staff, our capacity, the amount of children served. So yeah, you know, obviously always looking to grow because the more people on staff, the more kids we can help. Um, so those are our ultimate goals: is to raise our profile, raise our um, you know, raise awareness about who we are and what we do so that people will want to um, help us do that. Okay. I think, are we near the, are we out of time or not? No, okay. All right. Go ahead. Um, a couple of years ago, I went to a knowledge management conference, which was all corporate. And there, was, there were no nonprofits there. But, um, and, and the corporate world tends to adopt a lot of technology earlier than uh, the nonprofit world. But when I was there a couple of years ago, all the rage was using social um, technologies for knowledge management and stuff like that. And they were running into exactly the same sort of dilemma that you expressed with regard to your executive director not being inspired and educated, as you put it, to be able to use Twitter and, and stuff like that. And the, the methodology that was really um, rampant throughout the, the conference was reverse mentoring. Yeah. And so they would, they would um, match up their CEO with a younger person from the accounting department who was adept at using Facebook or Twitter or something like that, and have the opportunity to have a reverse mentoring sessions. So among your stakeholder groups, I don't know if it's among the clients or the younger lawyers or, or who, there are people who are quite adept at, you were saying Twitter, but it would apply to some of the other channels as well, adept at using these technologies, and that helps with the education part. 
Right. It doesn't help with the inspiration part. And that really might come just from finding out what other executive directors in similar sorts of organizations are doing successfully. Yeah. Yeah, I think fortunately we have a very um, dynamic and passionate executive director over 20 years uh, in the position. And he's, you know, gotten very good at traditional media um, and sort of just fundraising and being out in front of our, our audiences. Um, and again, fortunately, believes in it enough that we put resources into hiring somebody who does this um, well. But, um, you know, I think it's the, it's the fear of the unknown and not quite knowing how to do it. Um, so I think that is a great suggestion, just kind of get him somebody who will bring him in, you know, sort of into a comfort zone with it. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Um, yes, that is good. And I, I think uh, a lot of organizations share that same yeah. dilemma or whatever. Yeah. It's just, you know, so part of it's fear of the unknown or also, you know, they, uh, you know, because it is more of a humanistic social thing and they're used to you know, presenting themselves exterior as you know, the business person. But I was thinking of one thing uh, which was you were talking about you know, the videos or photos or things and the quotes that all seem to really you know, draw a lot of interest and you, know, you might at some point want to create some sort of campaign. It could either be like why I'm a child advocate or what child advocate mean, you know, means to me or yeah. you know, something like that. So that could be you could start it within your own organization, but that would seem to be something that other people could talk about, you know, like why I'm a child or something. We did. We tried. We oh, actually, did you? We, at, oh. our, at our annual benefit reception, yeah. we had um, someone there doing video. We haven't gotten the, the actual the, the fixed footage, right. the, the sound and everything, but yeah. I did go around, and, right. and one of the things was our next video should be, why am I a volunteer lawyer? Um, for child advocates, right? Yeah, Talk why? Uh, right. Experiences, right. And so hopefully, that's that's coming. Right. Um, we have we that's have good. Footage yeah. Yeah. But I, right. But that's why I just think like yeah. you could either do it like that or just like why I'm a child advocate. Then that's like you're not um, not that volunteer lawyer is good too. But then you're not limiting it. Anybody, right. anybody, you don't even have to be with your organization right. to say I'm a child advocate. You know, you know, potential. But anyway, it's just an idea. All right. I'm sorry. What we uh, is it? Are you wrapping That's up, or I'm not sure? I, I had one, one more thought when you right. said. I'm oh, sorry. I just. Okay. Yeah. Because. I, I had I had one comment. Okay. Oh, you yeah. do. Okay. okay. Yes. Uh, uh, yes, I will. I will allow. <laughs> it. All right. <laughs> Thank you so much, Jenny. Um, I, I I'm I work at Jenkins Law Library, so we have a little experience uh, reaching out to attorneys, and I feel your pain uh, because law firms uh, are they are kind of like corporate Twitter accounts. But one thing that came to mind that worked for us, uh, or doesn't didn't. We haven't exactly tried perhaps to its fullest extent, but I'm curious to see uh, the results if you tried it, and that is that there is a giant list of attorneys uh, practicing in Pennsylvania, um, even with their, uh, you know, even with their, their legal practice area listed publicly online, right. PA Disciplinary Board. Yeah. And so I don't know if you guys already use that for fundraising um, or for any sort of like friend raise or anything like that, Getting, but I mean it's basically like the giant list right. of, uh, of every attorney who is legal to practice in the state of Pennsylvania, those are human beings, and their email addresses are listed. And if they use that email address to register with Twitter, I didn't know that you can follow those users. <laughs> yeah. That's lawyer. Um, and uh, so now, granted, your hit, you know, the percentage of hits are going to be low, uh, right. but because the number of people who use the professional email address to sign up for Twitter is low. But those are human beings, and you're looking for human beings. Those are human beings who are attorneys. Right. Um, your target market, right there. Yeah. So. Even LinkedIn, it might be. It might connect. To That's true. LinkedIn. Even yeah. more so. Yeah, yeah. right. That's right. great. We actually, um, what we did, you know, we have a, a probably you know six or eight hundred active attorneys. You know, we have three hundred on a case in a year, but much larger pool. And Tracy did bring that um, that we sort of went through all of our volunteer attorneys and hit them each. You know, like right. us, share us, you know, join us, and we got a nice big boost um, at that point. But it hadn't occurred to me that of course we could go out into the broader world for people who don't even know us yet. And they sell that, actually, if you're yeah. interested in buying it. Yes. It is like, I mean, you can actually scrape it. You know, you can actually go to the website and say, okay, here's the yeah. website. Yeah, so yeah that's a, a great idea. good intern project. <laughs> <laughs> we love intern projects. Okay. Okay, so first of all, this is great that we have all this feedback. Now we're uh, we may have at the end just because we're going to have a little extra time that we can have sort of whatever is left over your re remaining questions, or when the National Constitution Center, if there's like seems some sort of things that are sort of mutual that you know may stir up in your your head, we'll get to that. But thank you so much. That thank was great. You. This was fun. You're really doing the fabulous job.
You're up next, so we'll just take a little bit of time while the National Constitution Center sets up. So again, there's the food on our table there. As Seth said, we don't want to take any home. And this is just, I'll just make a little interim reminder that after this program, we do all go out for drinks and casual conversation, and everyone is invited. No, 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 Okay, I think we're going to get ready to get started again. Okay. Okay, so i um, like to introduce our second presenter of the night, which is the National Constitution Center. Now, how many people here have been to the National Constitution Center? Wow. <laughs> All right. That's a big, that's pretty good, isn't it? That's excellent. Okay. Thank you. So you already know what it is and you've experienced it, but of course you can return again and again for their special exhibits and all different types of things that are going on there. But for those of you who haven't been there or may not know exactly what it is, the National Constitution Center is the first and only nonprofit, nonpartisan institution devoted to the United States Constitution. So it's very aptly named. <laughs> it's located in Independence Mall in uh, our city's historic district. And the center uh, highlights constitutional ideas and inspires active citizenship through uh, its state-of-the-art museum experience. Uh, that includes interactive exhibits, films and artifacts, special exhibitions, and the iconic Signers Hall. So I'm figuring that the people who have been there will probably remember Signers Hall. That's the one with all the bronze statues. You always get your picture taken next to one of the statues. So it's one of their good photo ops, I would imagine. And uh, also, it's uh, 
as America's Forum for Constitutional Dialogue. Uh, the center engages diverse leaders of government, public policy, journalism, and scholarship in public discussions and debates. And if you've ever heard them, they can often get very lively, very interesting, um, all different types of topics. Um, so when you, when you think of them, I'm sure they'll explain it, but you know, the Constitution is more than just that old document. It's a living, breathing document. And um, you know, all of us are citizens, and so it's always relevant in our lives. So they're always good at you know, finding ways to, uh, to make, it that, make it even more so. Uh, and then lastly, um, as a hub for constitutional education, they also offer a lot of civic learning resources, both online and offline. So I'm sure they will give us the rundown and all of that. But, um, but it's a very, you know, I know that the, the, you know, the word constitution may in our minds strike us as a little forgive me, but a little dusty, we may just think, because we don't know better. But the uh, Constitution Center is very good at bringing it to life, and uh, I'll let them take it from here. Oh, I'm sorry. The uh, presenters, again, are Lauren Saul, Director of Public Relations, and Sarah Fergus, the uh, Public Relations Manager. Thank you. you that was a wonderful introduction. Thank you. <laughs> a good PSA. Yeah, well, as Jenny mentioned, um, I'm Sarah Fergus. This is Lauren Saul. If you're looking at the National Constitution Center Public Relations Department. I'm here. Um, as Lauren mentioned, uh, we've kind of taken on social media over the past year and a half or so. Um, it used to live in our marketing department, and we made a conscious decision to move it into public relations because we felt like uh, you know we kind of have our finger on the pulse of everything going on in and around the museum. Um, we craft messages for a living, and it, it made sense for it to live within our department. As Jenny mentioned, uh, we kind of look at the museum as, as three-pronged. Um, we are a museum. You've probably come in, you've seen Signers Hall, you've seen you know, the wonderful theatrical presentation of Freedom Rising, you've seen the story of We the People. Maybe some of you have come in to see um, our feature exhibitions. Currently, we have the 1968 exhibit. If you haven't been, you will love it. And it's only here until September 2nd, so please, come on down. Um, we had Prohibition here at the beginning of this year. Um, so we, you know, we, we keep things very fresh in terms of the museum. Uh, we also are you know, a, a space for town hall discussion about the Constitution and constitutional ideals. Um, as Denny mentioned, it's, it sometimes is a dusty word, but um, you know, issues constitutionally are pervasive in um, what's going on today. I mean, Edward Snowden, uh, WikiLeaks, these things all come with constitutional issues that <coughs> we discuss frequently in the museum. And also, as she mentioned, uh, we are a National Center for Civic Education. We celebrate Constitution Day every September 17th. Uh, we celebrate Veterans Day, Memorial Day, Flag Day is huge, obviously. Independence Day. Um, we really serve schools um, and teachers who are you know, formulating their lesson plans around, particularly, the making of the Constitution. So um, in terms of our social media strategy, our goals kind of formulate around these ideas, you know, first and foremost, really just spreading the brand awareness of the Constitution Center. Um, you know, often people know of it, but maybe they haven't been back in a while. We see that a lot. We're at our 10-year anniversary at this point. Um, so we're, you know, re-inviting people to come in. We use social media to promote, you know, upcoming exhibits, events, things going on, promotions. Um, we also use it to kind of move into the national space. Uh, you know, we are not just a regional destination, but a national destination. Uh, we are on the historic Independence Mall, so people include us as a part of their you know, old city, historic Philadelphia experience. Um, and we do work to establish the museum as a thought leader in the industry. Our uh, brand new president and CEO, Jeff Rosen, is uh, a professor at George Washington Law. He is the uh, legal affairs editor at the New Republic. He has a lot to say, and he loves the Constitution, and he will talk about it for days. Um, and he really is a thought leader in the industry. He just was on Stephen Colbert last month. Um, so he, he really has a lot to say, and he, he can provide really great context for what's going on today. Um, in addition to the brand awareness, we obviously want to increase visitors to the museum. Our members, our donor base, 
Um, and really just any potential audience engagement. We want to give them a reason to come into the museum. In addition to this, Lauren actually kind of brushed on this a little bit in her comment. We use social media to build niche audiences. We are public relations practitioners, so we like to engage with journalists, with niche groups, with interest-based groups. Um, it's a really great way to hit into people that, um, you know, go right into them and, you know, go at them by their interests. Uh, so these are our primary social media outlets that we're working with, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, and YouTube. Just keep on moving. <laughs> our Facebook pages are probably our oldest page. It was started in March of 2009. Um, we have 14,644 followers at this point. As of today. As of this morning. <laughs> Accurate um, it grows. Um, you know, we get defollowed, and then we'll be followed by 10 more people. So we tend to net every day, which is, we yeah. hope, a good thing. Um, we, this was kind of touched on in the last presentation, but Facebook definitely has certain posts that really resonate better with audiences. Uh, photos do really well. Videos do very, very well. Um, fun facts. People really enjoy uh, historic moments. You know, on this day, you know, X day in history, X president announced that he was running or happy birthday. I think it was Barack Obama's birthday the other day. We wished him happy birthday. Um, people kind of turn to us for their quick news um, as it applies to the Constitution. And so we, we like to kind of give them those little factoids and they do very well on Facebook. Here is our page. And you'll see this is a sampling of kind of the posts. These are from over the weekend. Um, so we have an announcement uh, about a comedian that's coming in October, Colin Quinn. He's doing his popular unconstitutional piece in the Constitution Center, and he announced it on Thank you. a daily show last Thursday night. Okay. Captain Colbert. Um, we also do the quotes with photos. Like we've really just recently kind of forayed into it, and it's, it's gone very well. Um, so this is a photo in Steiner's Hall with Ben Franklin kind of staring you in the face, and um, a really nice quote from him about his opinion of the Constitution. Um, and you can see it got shared a good amount of times and 110 likes. So I think we're going to continue in that direction. Um, and we do post our promotions and reach out to niche groups about you know, this is a great example of grandparents and seniors. We're, we're offering a special discount for them next month. Our Twitter audience, uh, I would venture to say, is significantly different than our Facebook audience. We have uh, 9,210 followers. Uh, the, the rate of growth has, is really taking off. Uh, when I made this presentation a week ago, we were uh, below 9,000 followers. So it's growing. I think it's attributed to our new CEO. I think he's, he's out, he's, he is talking, and as you can see, uh, he does have a Twitter handle, which we've really kind of worked over the, the past few months to kind of solidify, ramp up. Uh, we also are working with our CEO uh, to get him a little bit more involved. Right now, he'll tweet about conferences he goes to. Um, we'll tweet for him sometimes if there's an interview. Uh, we experience issues when, when we have to get legal. <laughs> Uh, so we'd like to involve him more so he can kind of, you know, really kind of uh, communicate with people on that legal you know, standpoint that maybe Lauren and I don't have the training to do. Um, Lauren and I also have our own Twitter handles uh, that we, we, we push out supplementary information or we engage with people with. Um, that way we're not blasting Constitution Center followers all day long. It kind of spreads out or fans out over four different handles. Um, we find that folks on Twitter engage in more scholarly discussion. Um, they tend to be more thoughtful about their responses. We, we see on Facebook that sometimes followers get um, agitated about politics. And it, you know, it comes from a little bit more of a scholarly base on Twitter. Um, Current events go very well. Anything about the Supreme Court, I mean, SCOTUS, the hashtag was trending for basically the entire month of June. And we really tried to make sure we were involved in that as much as possible. Um, and when we talk a lot about our current exhibitions. Any news clips that come in, we usually tweet out. As Lauren mentioned, we, we really do like to, um, you know, 
uh, what's the word? Thank the folks that are that are writing for us and, and kind of acknowledge them and follow them back and help them spread their work. I will also say Sarah and I live tweet all of our events. So all of our American Town Hall series that we're doing, we um, are working right now to create a dedicated hashtag for the season over next year so that people can solicit questions if they feel more comfortable doing it on Twitter um, and also engaging the live stream audience uh, like we're doing tonight. But we do live tweet everything and we'll do the advanced prep work and see which panelists are coming in with Twitter handles um, so that we're tagging their quotes and they're getting retweeted out to their followers during our programs. Yeah, I think that's really important to, to make sure we tag everybody and hashtag everything that's necessary. We try to hit all of our bases. And I think we recognize Twitter is not going away anytime soon, so we spend a lot of time with it. We do, I would say, we go up to like, if it's not a day where we have a program, five or six tweets a day, we use, um, Sarah will tell you, Hootsuite. Sometimes we'll schedule them out on weekends, but we're trying to um, look at the internet, what's trending, what we can apply back to the Constitution Center in terms of issues that are in the news, like Snowden and uh, Manning and all of those issues with the Fourth Amendment. Um, I use NCC Lauren um, also for pitching press that are on media. Um, sometimes that is a good way to get to people. You know you get 100 emails a day, you get five tweets to you a day. Um, so we've been using that handle as well as a way to connect with journalists and another way for them to get in touch with us. A uh, screenshot of our Twitter page as of this morning. And this is just a graphic to show kind of what I mentioned already about the Twitter followership. I think Lauren and I have really identified and figured out that this is not going away and our followership is growing on Twitter. Um, and it's, it's the folks that we want to really engage with um, you know, in a scholarly way and about current and relevant events. Um, you know, the national town hall kind of arm of the Constitution Center. We're really kind of ramping up on Twitter. And these might be people who don't step foot in the building, but yes. they're engaging with us online on our different um, content that we provide to them online with the blog and things like that. So we do recognize that these might not be people that come in the building, but they're talking about us and they're turning to us first when there are issues that they need help being explained to that are going on with the Supreme Court and things like that. We started an Instagram account uh, just this spring, um, so it's it's definitely a, a work in progress. But we also have, you know, we, we realize that that's also not going away. Um, we have 109 followers at this point. Uh, we find that people really enjoy, obviously, compelling photos. Again, fast facts, but performed in you know, presented in a very visual state. Uh, flashback photos, also known as Throwback Thursday, people respond very well to. Behind the scenes shots, anything that is kind of a view into the Constitution Center that maybe they wouldn't get by just stepping in our door, we really try to provide for folks on Instagram. Um, we recognize that this is an outlet that we need to let grow more and we need to kind of feed more. I think when we first started, we were uploading a photo once or twice a week, and I think we've hit the point where it needs to be daily. Um, we've established the beast, now we need to feed the beast. Um, so we're actually very excited about that. I mean, it's, it's a pretty social media outlet, I'd say. I personally like it. Yeah. <laughs> and here is that. Um, so you'll see we have a couple flashbacks. I'll talk about the beast flags. Um, we did a promotion for a law event that we had last week. We regrammed someone. Someone took a photo of the facade of our building. And, we're trying to engage, so we regrammed that shot, a photo of our CEO. But we try to be diverse. Um, the one photo is of hashtag selfie Saturday, which is a thing that usually teenagers do, but we thought we'd be a little cute and cheeky and take a photo of our, the facade of our building, and it's our selfie Saturday. <laughs> Pinterest, we also uh, recently just started, um, and we're still, again, this is definitely an area that we're working at. Um, you know, we recognize that Pinterest was started by teachers, um, so we do have something to offer teachers in that we have lesson plans and civic holiday, you know, facts and, and, and ways that teachers can, you know, use us as a resource. And we recognize that and we know that we need to kind of build more boards in uh, that really cater to our teacher base. Uh, we also started posting some wedding photos at the Constitution Center is an event space that can be rented for our weddings. The photos of them are beautiful, and we recognize that there are a lot of brides and brides-to-be on the <coughs> list. 
Um, <laughs> yeah, Lauren is on. <laughs> All the time. Um, so, and, and, you know, we really have seen some traction with those photos they've kind of taken off. We also post merchandise from our feature exhibition. So uh, this summer we had the 1968 exhibit, and we went up into the museum gift shop and took, a, took photos of all the tie-dye t-shirts, the wacky glasses, the, the mugs, the shot glasses, and we posted them, and we saw a lot of good traction there, and it's just a great way to kind of market those items that usually are only housed within the confines of the gift shop. And here is our Constitution Center Pinterest page, and you'll see, um, you know, we center it around events and classroom and kid family activities and lesson plans, facts, you know, we, we talk a lot about fast facts. Um, people really turn to us for that. And um, we figured we'd highlight some, some projects that we've, we've just recently been working on and kind of working to hone and, um, you know, build. Uh, I mentioned Throwback Thursday. It's something that we do. Uh, we do it predominantly on Facebook and Instagram. However, if it's a slower day on Twitter, I will post it up on Twitter. Um, shaved down, obviously, um, because of the character count. Um, I should mention that the language on, across all of those platforms differs. Mm -hmm. We really do try to tailor everything to the audience. We know our audiences are very different. Um, so obviously this is a shot of Elizabeth Edwards when she was here during uh, the 2008 presidential election. We, you know, we, got, we saw a good amount of likes from that, a few shares. Uh, this is something that we stay uh, really to every Thursday. We don't um, stray away. We, we really want to try to build that as something that people say, oh, it's Thursday. I want to see what they're going to post this week. Last week we did a photo of Chief Utley. Um, we really kind of mine our, uh, our, you know, our resources to find new photos and, and new videos to post. So, I just skip on. Yes. Um, so if you've been to the center you'll, and you look up, you'll actually see in our Grand Hall Overlook, there's uh, every flag for every state and territory in the U.S. And it's um, in the order of the uh, day and year that uh, either the state uh, ratified the Constitution or they entered the union. <coughs> Um, you can kind of walk around and read each plaque. And we started posting um, on every single day that that state entered the union or ratified um, the photo of the flag hanging. And we'll Instagram it, kind of make it look pretty, and we'll put it up. And we've seen a lot of um, nice engagement from that. So I think that's something that we're going to continue through the year. Again, it's visual. There's a fact involved. Uh, this quote and photo thing, it's not going away. People really like it. So here, um, as I mentioned earlier, is the photo of Ben Franklin. I think we're going to start to explore the other founders, maybe the lesser known founders. Um, we figure we'll start with Ben and see how it went. Um, I think we'll definitely continue. We did an Instagram contest in June to kind of Help ramp up our Instagram followers. We had just started. Um, Retro Rama was uh, the name of the opening party for our 1968 exhibit, and we basically asked people. We knew people were going to be taking pictures. They were dressing up in their best 60s attire, and we thought, let's capitalize on that. Um, so we offered a hashtag, and we said, tweet your photos, post your photos on Instagram, use this hashtag, and you could be entered to win. Um, a prize, and the prize was a tour on the City Food Tours Peace, Love, and Cocktails tour. And I think it, the most important thing was they had to follow us to be entered to win, so we've been exploring the like-gating type mentality a lot more lately to increase using and a ticket type of uh, enhancement. It was very successful. We saw a lot of great posts that otherwise would have gone untagged and unfollowed. We were excited about that. We did a social media scavenger hunt on July 2nd. Um, uh, the museum on July 2nd was insanity. I mean, there was some activities of all kind. Wawa, Welcome America's Hoagie Day was on that day. Um, so we actually took cardboard cutouts of famous founders. We put them around Old City. And we came up with this print piece. Basically, you could choose to participate in one scavenger hunt question or all of them. Uh, you would literally read the, the hint, find the founder at the location in the hint, take your photo with them, upload it to Instagram or Twitter, hashtag it and follow us, and you were entered to win 
um, prize. If you did all of them, you were entered into winning a grand prize, which was, it was a nice part. It was a stag at the Hotel Monaco, uh, Moshulu tickets, and look at the last one, Ride the Duck tickets. So we really tried to amp up the prizes um, in the hopes of seeing more participation. We saw a good amount, and, and people were really involved, and we did see a bump in followership that day. Um, and we learned a lot of lessons about running a social media scavenger hunt. It's, it's tricky. <laughs> uh, we wanted to kind of talk about, you know, Lauren and I are a two-woman team, and we, we really try to keep our thumb on what's going on. So we, we try to get our information daily. Like Lauren mentioned, we sit on Hootsuite all day long. Um, you know, not just political, but social media. You know, I read Mashable constantly. If there's ever a decision, um, webinar, we'll always sign up, and if we can't make the webinar, we'll read the notes. Um, this Mari Smith, we both follow on Facebook. She's really great about breaking news um, in terms of what's going on on Facebook, any changes. So when Facebook Insights changed a few weeks ago, it was up immediately, and she gave us a great tutorial on what changed. Um, we also like to look at our partner organizations and institutions that are similar to us. Obviously, the museum um, you know, is a really great resource. We look at you know other uh, tourism partners like the IVC, um, the American Museum of Natural History, the Smithsonian. We're, we're constantly looking at others and um, you know just seeing what's out there, seeing what's trending, seeing how we can you know just continue to push. I also say when we venture into talks about, with partners now, we ask the question social media. It's not just for us about press releases anymore. It's, okay, well, what are you going to do to help promote this on social media? Let's tag each other. Let's repost. Um, we try to be very generous to all of our partners. We're always tagging them. We're using hashtags and things like that. So that, I think that kind of floats in. It, it's changing our strategy from a pitching and public relations perspective as well. Um, we do have some challenges. We just went through and came up with a few that, you know, we're, we're very mindful of and we're always working to kind of overcome. Um, free speech is a, is a very big issue for us. We are an institution that celebrates the Constitution, um, so free speech is a must. Um, however, you know, we are, what comes with us is some politics. Uh, we are bipartisan by nature, um, but, you know, when we give someone an award that someone else disagrees with, we hear about it um, a, a lot, a good deal. If, if you'd like, go on our Facebook page and see what people think about Hillary Clinton today. Um, so, you know, we walk a fine line uh, between allowing, obviously, freedom of expression, but also keeping the page so that bullying is not promoted, uh, profanity is not promoted. Lauren and I will have to keep tabs on comments and just, you know, we're very careful. You'll see um, we have a statement on our Facebook profile that outright says, you know, we cherish and celebrate the right for you to, to express yourself, um, but you must do so in a respectful manner. And um, we'll, we're very careful about that. But it is a fine line. <laughs> And this was actually something that we got from our friends at the Smithsonian when we were talking to them because they had a similar people bullying each other off of making comments, or I'm sure you've all experienced it. You post what you think is a really amazing post <coughs> from someone. The first comment is something super negative, and that eliminates all the, the likes and feedback after that. So we at least we wanted to make sure it was clear to people who enter into liking our page that this is our rule for our page. Another challenge is um, measuring, obviously, I, mean, I think that's a challenge for most people. Um, we try to really stay on it. Um, all of our links are drilled down to bit.ly so we can track clicks for every single link on Facebook and Twitter both. We do use Hootsuite Analytics. Um, for those of you that don't have Hootsuite, it's wonderful and it's free. Um, we use Facebook Insights and their, their new insights is really just it ramped up and it's it's much better than it was and um, when all else fails we, we use old-fashioned tracking I, I like to see how many followers came in overnight or how many followers came in on Friday night um, we keep uh, Facebook pages on our iPhones and we're looking constantly <laughs> uh, on vacation <laughs> um, but yeah we like to keep tabs on things and make sure that we understand numbers uh, 
we also, you know, see a huge bump on the weekends, and we know people are waking up, taking their kids to soccer practice, and reading Facebook. So we make sure we get that post in at 10, 10.30, Saturday morning, and, and we see a good amount of engagement. A challenge for us is that we are not community managers by trade. Our, both of our uh, backgrounds are in public relations. They are similar, they go hand in hand, and in this day and age, they have to go hand in hand. Um, but it's kind of a, a, you know, there's a learning curve. Um, we, we just had social media written into our job description. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Now that they already have you there, right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and they can add it in. Um, so, you know, we're constantly teaching ourselves, and which is why we, we, we try to read as much as we can and stay up on the trends as much as we can. But again, we have pitching and writing uh, to do in the meantime. So there's that constant struggle with uh, what are we going to do today. Uh, can we just put this up on social media? Is uh -huh. the, uh, the famous question we get asked internally by staff who probably haven't even seen our Facebook page before, and it's the social media collect all, you know, oh, you can just throw that up on social media, right? When, you know, just like you guys, we schedule things out, we prioritize, there's, a, there's some strategy behind it, and so sometimes explaining to other staff members, we can put it on Twitter tomorrow night, but not Facebook and here's why doesn't always jive with them. So that's something that we're always working on. And like we said, our audiences are so different. So explaining to our CEO that his town hall discussion on the Fourth Amendment is not going to do that well on our Facebook page based off of our previous experience, I think that kind of collects into that. But it's social media. It's become this buzzword now, and it almost doesn't have like a meaning behind it. Everyone just says, says it but doesn't get it. Managing content is something that we're just constantly keeping tabs on. We are not at a lack for content. Um, you know, there's so much going on at the museum and with the town hall. Um, we do have a blog, so there's always stuff going on. It's more of how to manage it. It's, it's where are the priorities? How are we going to deliver things creatively? And how are we kind of going to siphon them off? Okay, this is going to go on Twitter, this is going on Facebook, and this is the timing for that. And then something, you know, might pop up in current events, and we might have to throw that all the window and say, okay, we need to post about Edward Snowden today. Yeah. Um, so that's the constant feeding the beast and feeding it in an organized manner. Okay. Budget. I'm sure no one, you know, everyone knows about this. You know, we have none. We don't have a budget. Um, some corporate. People can, you know, pay you know, companies to measure for them. They can pay companies to write their tweets for them. And um, we really, it's, it's, it's Lauren and I, and um, we don't, we give our interns projects, but we're the ones writing the content at the end of the day. Okay, great. Oh, good timing. Excellent. <laughs> All right, now before we begin, I have an important question. Now, why was Chate? Chase Hutley on the Facebook page? <laughs> oh, he did. Uh, he, he was at the center in 2006 oh, for a volunteer oh, okay. So, okay. Not because, uh, maybe oh. I thought it was going to bring them good luck, but it, it's, it's uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Well, um, you know, you brought up a lot of good cha you know, challenges and things. So uh, does anybody have you want to start off with something? You want to do it like that? Does it come over there, or we're going to still do the walk around? No, all right. Uh, well, I, I may just kick it off when you mentioned, you know, you have a lot of online resources, which you said you're using on Pinterest. But, um, you know, they, on Facebook, aside from, as you're saying, the photos and things, um, quizzes or games, like you could do, do you do that? <laughs> things like that? Because that seems like a thing that would engage. We have a naturalization quiz that we put up every con day. Would you, could you pass it if you're an American citizen already by birth and many people fail it? Uh, which founding father are you? We, we do actually, some of, we have some really great through our civic education hub um, have those resources that we, we do try and do open-ended questions from time to time. Those specifically didn't highlight it, but we do try and do that. Okay. Um, all right. And you mentioned also about social media measurement tools, right? Or something that you were, does anybody here have some suggestions in terms of what might be a good, they're, they're, aside from what they're using, which it seems like the built-in tools so that, you know, that they all, all of those platforms have. Yeah. I'm just curious, yeah. curious, you know, something that I run into is when you guys are writing the tweets and the, and the, the different Facebook posts and everything like that, 
um, with with having to get that through lawyers and, and getting the okay and making sure it's appropriate. I mean, how how does it work? Are you guys really writing about law on your own? Do you have help? I mean, how is it? It's, that's actually a really great question because we've gotten, now that we have a new CEO who's a legal affairs scholar, um, more pushback about doing like live chats and things like that. And and we always say like that's a great idea, but we shy away from asking specific questions that we can't moderate as community managers. We're not historians. We're not. So we have to get our historians and our CEO up to speed on technology so that they can sit and do those type of questions because there is an, a need for that. Um, the only thing that we've vetted through the lawyer, we basically will repost stuff and link to articles on Con Daily. So we're just hashtagging things that are relevant in the news. Um, but the lawyer did vet that about us section to make sure we were, because we were so sensitive about freedom of speech. Okay. I think first, good news, your slide is outdated. Um, you're at 9221. <laughs> so, is that you? I wish I could give you 11. I, I can give about three accounts one. What a great collaboration. But, you know, ce you celebrate growth wherever it comes and whenever it comes. certainly do. Um, two thoughts quick that came to mind, and then I'm going to duck out to put a two-year-old to bed. Um, one, one organization, um, American Society of Association Executives, I just came back from their annual meeting, and the fact that you're a membership organization as well, the content of the question of community building is prime and center. And how does it membership? How do membership organizations do that? Mm -hmm. So if you can turn your membership people onto that, maybe they'll go do the research for you, and they'll feel like you're trying to help grow their membership at the same time. So a win-win. And the other thing, I, I, you know, I think you have most of the statistics. My only question is what you're doing and, and thoughts about how do you marry the social statistics with the web statistics. Because really the social is trying to pull through to actions in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. And if you marry those two, I'm, I'm not sure you need a heck of a lot because you got smart people, y'all and the people around you, and it's just testing from there. Those are great, those are great points. We kind of are branched off in different quadrants. Like we have a web manager and we have, and we're not always working, we're not always seeing the bigger picture, but that's a really good too. Andrew? Yeah. I, I actually thought of this before you even started talking, so it could be irrelevant. Maybe you've already done it, um, at, but I, I apologize. It's not particularly insightful. But every time anyone talks to me about the National Constitution Center, um, the one thing that always comes up are, of course, the, you know, the bronze statues. Yeah. I think you need to embrace the crazy picture taking that's happening with these bronze statues. I've never seen pictures uh, of the National Constitution Center without somebody, you know, posing with uh, one of our founding right fathers. Yeah, yeah, something something ridiculous, yeah, right. Yeah. So if you haven't already embraced it, I would love to see, you know, I don't know, like, what's the craziest picture you can take with Ben Franklin like that, yeah. or, or something like that. I mean, obviously, you are going to run into that same issue with free speech where there are we some pictures people take with Ben Franklin that you don't want. <laughs> yeah. There are a lot of kids who pick his nose. I mean, if you want that, there's a lot. But I, I actually really like that idea, and I don't know if anyone's following what the Smithsonian is doing, but they're doing um, submissions for photos to curate an actual photo ex exhibit at the museum that's of people experiencing the Smithsonian. And I think that's just so genius for Philadelphia in general. Like, if we can all get together as tours and partners and collaborators and show people experiencing us. But I think we do, like, that would be amazing to do, like, an album of piece of maker photo and your best experience type of thing. That's a really great idea. Thank you. We'll see. You'll be our first one. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah, there's probably no lack of content there, right? But, um, <laughs> Seth, I think, were you going to say something? Thanks. Um, you talked before about um, walking the fine line because of being bipartisan or multipartisan. All partisan, yeah. All parties. <laughs> Omnipartisan. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and and um, it, it occurs to me that um, the different segments of the public really do respond to different things. Exactly. And uh, you know, I know that um, for myself, who would identify on the left side of things. When I think about and when I read about the Founding Fathers and, and stuff like that, I get goosebumps, and I'm so inspired by that. But it's not the same thing that's necessarily inspiring other folks. So when, when you're honoring Hillary Clinton, 
and the next day perhaps honoring um, Dick Cheney, uh, it seems like there's different, obviously there's different audiences who are going to respond to it, but I'm, I'm wondering if there's ways in which you can have sort of semi-segmented channels without seeming uh, uh, hypocritical or anything like that, but actually kind of, uh, uh, you know, going to the sweet spot for different channels for different audiences. I, I think we try, I mean, I, I understand that, and I would, you know, I love to craft a good message for a specific audience. Um, you know, instead of going on the political angle of things, we usually try to keep it um, formal. Would you say that's the right word? Um, and, you know, try to celebrate an individual for their work and not necessarily their political affiliation. Um, people might not always see it that way. Uh, you know, a really great example is this, this Liberty Medal coming up. You know, our board chair is Jeb Bush, and he's giving uh, Hillary Clinton the Liberty Medal. Um, so we really try to put ourselves as staff members, and this is internally everywhere. You, you don't, you know, you just try to put yourself in the position of, of nonpartisan at all times. We really try to communicate you know, nonpartisan, bipartisan, you know, both sides. And I think we also, we we can post about Hillary <coughs> one day and post about Jeb Bush the next, but then they, we don't have a cross of like people saying, oh, I recognize that you are trying to be all-encompassing. It's almost like the people will complain, 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 but the people who are liking are not vocal and like defending us. <laughs> Yeah. So we get into that as well. It's very, it's fascinating. I'm, you all know it's fascinating to watch what happens uh, when you, you, you kind of hit that post and then you let it fly. And <laughs> who knows what's going to happen. Um, and you get that, you want to really just like almost come in as an anonymous user and say, hey, I think that Constitution Center is pretty cool. Why don't you lay off them for a little bit? You can't, you can't do that, and I don't encourage that by anyone, and I've never done that. But I take screenshots of those comments and save them. <laughs> I mean, yeah, we could, we could do a whole section on trolls, because that is a real legitimate thing that is out there, the people that, you know, no matter what, you're not going to please them. And I think we, you, you grow a thick skin with social media and you, you let it, you say, I'm, I'm doing the best I can. I'm giving you all the content. And if you come in the building, you see for yourself. They're right. talking. Right. Right. Lamar, didn't you have something you were no, I was, I was oh. You didn't uh, honor Dick Cheney, did you? No. Oh, that was a joke. That was a joke. But Jeb Bush is our board chair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, but but would you? No. But he's been to the center before. He's done a panel. Dick Cheney, Donald Rumsfeld. Yeah, we. It's both. It's definitely. It really is an all-partisan institution. Well, you know, people use as as the Supreme Court, you know, so clearly shows that the interpretation of the the Constitution is open to interpretation, right? You know, so depending on how you look at it, maybe I don't know if that would be. I guess you can't really do sort of an insight into like how two things are so diametrically sort of viewed and then using the Constitution as sort of the backbone of the argument, the two sides. But anyway. Um, Have there been any movies made there for this? Um, we do. I mean, we definitely served as the backdrop for our film locations when people come yeah. into Philly. Yeah. And we've done a movie. We've ourselves hosted movie screenings, John Adams, The Pacific, things like that. We try. I mean, we, we really do it all. It's a multifaceted. For all we do on the daytime, there's all that goes on at the night with the weddings and rentals and things like that. So if anyone's looking to host an event at the Constitution Center, please see us afterwards. Do you do you do a lot? That we mentioned because I know you do have you said like parties and some some of them are you know rentals. But aside from that, you also just your ex exhibition related things. Is yeah. that you also on? I guess at those times. Yeah. Yeah. We do parties for our opening for our exhibitions as well. Okay. Was that? Uh, sorry, Jim. Did you have some? Yes. Do you ever give your opinions on anything? Do we personally? Or does the Constitution Center? You as the Constitution Center. No, no. no. So because we don't. I mean, you're you are trying using the Constitution. We are hoping our users formulate their own opinion. So if they have a question, they you read one of our articles. They use our interactive Constitution, and they get to where they need to go on their own without listening to everything else that's going around. We're here for the information. Yeah. 
And I also have no opinions on, on anything. <laughs> on social media. <laughs> None oops, oops. Oh, you mean just in general? On social you can't. media, I've you learned can't. to stay off of oh, yeah. wow. No politics, no. no. Uh -huh. I guess, right. You never know what you're going to say that's going to somehow be construed. Yeah. Okay. Thank All you. right. Well, I, I see the hook is here. So, uh, But anyway, thank you all for showing up. It was a great crowd. We had two fabulous presenters. I learned a lot about uh, two very worthy organizations. Don't forget, you can like and follow and share all of their different things. You, know, so you can look them up online. And um, uh, we usually ask, I don't know if, don't know if you have to leave, but you know, if you can just hang around a little bit. Some people may want to have some one-on-one -on -one conversations. And again, everyone is welcome to join us at the end to come out with us, because we usually just go out and have some casual fun. All right, thanks. Thank you. Thank you.